We are on Crown Ridge. We've got about four minutes or so before the official start. We just happened to match this morning. We didn't discuss it or anything, but we're psychic. We just, we came out, we matching. Good morning. Let's go down to that corner and see what, what street that is. I've never been this way. So Paul and I are wearing our Aero, Pro Team Aero jerseys. It is about uh, 13 or 14 Celsius, I'm guessing. 57 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty cool. So fall is in the air and the cooler yeah. weather has come to Central Texas. We'll get some clips for you all. Hang in there, should be interesting. On this ride, Paul and I left Northampton, rode into the woodlands. We picked up Team RR, headed out Research Forest, went on Fish Creek, nice pace into Honie. All of that's on film. Went on Raven Chapel there, Mill Route. We stopped filming on 2854, rode into Montgomery. We left the group and went out on 1097 went through the forest and while we're going through the forest we saw them going the other way we went through on 149 south we took hidden forest road to mount pleasant road went on 1097 we started to film on 1097 into montgomery came across christian and them then we rode back on spring branch that's all off camera past gary we got into the neighborhood on grand lake estates and once we got towards Honey Egypt, we started a film. We got on our favorite road, took us back into the woodlands. I think you all will enjoy the clips we got for you. It was a beautiful day, very breezy. The weather was very, very mild. Yeah, we're on Egypt Lane right here, going up towards 1488. We just left Research Forest Drive. The pace was kind of quick. So it was a very nice, mild day. It actually was a little nippy. I did not put on the uh, base layer I just wore the aero jersey because it warms up quickly if we feel like going a hundred we might but I have a sore back so I don't know yeah Mike was asking Paul how far we're going today we'll see. Uh, this crazy Paul went and hammered himself on Thursday on a solo workout and he showed up this morning telling me his back was bothering him after the workout he was fine during the workout but he pushed so hard <laughs> that his back was bothering him. Uh, he was doing large gear workouts, so we weren't sure how his back would hold up. Yeah. We're talking about Abby's sock. That's Mike S5 going to push the the pedestrian crosswalk <laughs> thing there to get this light to activate. But Abby's wearing some socks where the sun hits him and they light up. A bit loud for my taste. That's what we're talking about. I was giving Ar Abby a hard time on this ride because he likes to go to the front but doesn't like to pull then he'll drift back and leave a gap. So you hear me telling him, get up there. You know, you can't just sit at the back the whole ride. Just messing with him. He always likes to say we should have mercy. But he's putting in more miles than anybody else in the area because he's retired all he does is ride but then he comes and acts like have, mer have mercy have mercy so he's our local sandbagger <laughs> and so we like to give him a hard time but you know he's doing supposedly he announces that he's doing 500 miles a week well if you're doing 500 miles a week you can't pull for, for two minutes to help the group you're riding with I don't understand that so don't tell anybody you're doing a lot of miles if 
you ride like you're not. What's the point? So he likes to go to the front when the effort is hard, let's say on a climb or whatever, but then they don't want to pull. So then what happens is once the group gets going, he leaves a gap and waves people up like he's directing traffic. And my attitude is, don't go to the front if you're not going to pull through. Just sit on the back and stay there. Because you disrupt the flow. You're leaving gaps that people have to close. And when you ride in the group, you don't really have to pull, but I think it's better to sit in the line, get to the front, and then just pull off if you don't want to pull, but at least go through the line. What's the point of being in third or fourth position and then drifting to the back? It's not easy at the back. You work hard because that yo-yo effect, I think it's harder at the back. And that's why I titled this ride staying at the front you know? <laughs> because really if you sit in the back by the time you're reacting to what has already happened that's Abby right there I put the arrow on by the time you're reacting the, the people at the front have already put an effort out and they're probably resting while you're still working trying to catch up so I think it's easier to stay in the line you know maybe mid pack or further up even if you're not in top condition just being in there shelters you better than sitting at the back i think the stronger riders should be at the back if they don't if they're not pulling because then they can work as hard as they want reacting to efforts that are coming from the guys at the front it's hard back there. Avoid staying back there. <laughs> there is a French rider, Julien Alaphilippe. He always hangs out at the back when he's not ready to make a move in the races. They always say that's where he likes to be from time to time. But I'm sure he's got a reason why he's there. Because it's not easy back there. So you see how we're rolling here. And these guys are like what I call pedaling backwards. You see Abby here? He was at the front. Now he's drifting back and he's motioning people to go through. I'm not interested in that. You can see where I am. I'm up front. I don't want to chase anybody unnecessarily. So when we turn here, there are a couple of riders already up the road. Patrick is one of them and another guy with a yellow bike named Logan. They're probably about maybe an eighth of a mile up the road maybe 250 meters or so so we're going to have to ride up to them so if you're at the back those guys who were drifting a second ago they're gonna have to work their tail off because we lift the pace to get up to them you can't see me now but I'm in front of Kenny who's in front of Mike here is Mike s5 and we're riding up to Logan and Patrick I'm on the wheel I believe the guy I don't know his name but he wears a bike land which is one of the local shops in the area short and so he's pulling me so I'm in second position but we're still a little ways off the wheel wheels of the top guys that's what we're riding up to and we're doing about 22 23 miles an hour and it's breezy, you can hear the wind. It was breezy the, the entire day. There was no wind-aided section. And you will see later in the ride when Paul and I are coming back, we're coming back into that southeast wind because it warms up later in the day. Listen to that wind. So there, there are the guys we're catching up to. Now Patrick is gonna pull off because the two of them are riding side by side. Patrick's gonna pull off, he's waving us through. And Logan is going to go ahead and take the lead. He was riding with Patrick. They were talking. So even when you're warming up, you have to pay attention. You see my cadence is up.
I've been busier than normal the last few weeks, so my training has been kind of spotty. But this, this is the time of year to focus on other things. If you've been training a lot all summer, and, you know, from the spring to summer, now's the time you can back off on your training and spend more time on, you know, work and other things, hang out with family. Because October really is a good period to taper down from your regular cycling load. It's kind of like a good rest period. Although, where we live, the guys don't really back off, so you have to be very disciplined to decide, okay, I'm just gonna sit in for the next few rides or so and not ride too hard. You know, you can, you can ride with them, but you don't have to be initiating the action, per se. All I'm doing is following here. Even later in the ride, Dan will ask, are you one of the guys that started this? Because we ended up just riding so hard. <laughs> and I told him, no, not me. I was just kind of following. I'm in third position, and I just, I, you will see, I will do the same effort when I get to the front. But this is what I'm talking about. So all of us are in the line. So if everybody goes through, and let's say the line just keeps moving, per se, even if you get your nose to the front and you don't feel like you want to pull, just once you get there, you can pull off and, and drift back in. But there's no point in leaving huge gaps for the people following you and waving them up unnecessarily, especially if you're not struggling with the pace. You'll see what I'm talking about. So that's Kenny on the right there. He usually rides with the WCC boys. I actually ended up seeing Jerry and Mo in them the, uh, the day after this ride. I was out, I left a little later than normal and they were out spinning. I'm not sure what they did on Saturday, but Jerry is here with us. Jerry's in the back, but Mo's not here. Quite a few of the guys from his group right here, but Patrick usually rides there. That's Logan who's pulled off the front. This light is a short light. I believe we, we get the green. It was red earlier. So when the speeds are this high, 38K is about 24 miles an hour. 23 to 25 is what we're riding. About 23 right now. Up is breezy. It's a false flat. It says 1%. It's a little more than that. But this whole time we're riding up, so you want to stay close or you waste a lot of energy. So that's the guy I was following when we're bridging up to Patrick and Logan. He finishes pull. I go to the front. I keep my cadence high and I keep the effort about the same. Now my heart rate has gone up probably 10 beats, 10 to 12 beats once I hit the front. It was like 152, so about 13 beats when I was in the back. I don't monitor that when I'm riding. All I'm doing is trying to keep the effort the same by feel. Like two and a half out of five, something like that. And when I when I pull off the front, I don't know if you hear him clearly, but Mike S5 here will say to me, thanks for keeping it slow. Well, I wasn't keeping it slow. I was doing exactly what they were doing. I'm keeping my cadence up to save my legs. 
so I'm stressing my aerobic system more. That's why my heart rate is going up. But it's breezy and we're going up a up a grade, kind of like a false flat. So you have to really measure your effort. I intentionally pulled for exactly 120 seconds, about two minutes. I looked at the clock when I got to the front and I stayed there for exactly two minutes. Right there, I just drift to the side. Kenny takes over. I didn't realize that Paul was in third position because he had been further back. And now he's here, so I decide I'm gonna get in front of him because he already hammered himself on Thursday. I didn't want him pulling at this point because with a, a day like this with mild temperatures, it was a beautiful day. I hadn't ridden all week, so I figured we're gonna do a long day. So this was to save him from any kind of unnecessary effort because he's really monitoring how he feels. And the funny thing is he said when he was riding, he was fine. After the ride, then his back started acting up. So he stretched and did other things to get ready for Saturday. I was only able to get out on Tuesday, so I was busy with other things the rest of the week. So we did in excess of six hours, almost seven hours on this ride. So the goal here right now is just settling into some kind of a comfortable zone, get some kind of tempo going. When I initially pulled off, my heart rate was in the 170s. After I accelerated to get back in the line, I had settling down. I don't really pay that much attention to it. I focus on staying relaxed and making sure I'm maximizing my mechanical efficiency. I am not spinning a high cadence because I'm in the line and kind of just cruising at this point. You know, you gotta have to mix it up. Mike, that's Mike Weingrau over there with the white sleeves. I think uh, he's got like arm screens on or a long sleeve base layer. It's going to be in excess of 24 Celsius by the time we're done. So I just put on this aero jersey because it's, it has good coverage and I figure it would work. It worked out great. It was perfect. My guess five standing. I continue my rhythm seated. It's kind of a punchy little bump. We're coming towards Ridge Lake Shores. I think it goes to like two and a half percent. It's short, but it gets there in a hurry. I unzip that jersey right there getting a little warm <laughs> even though it says 12 celsius it feels warmer it's very nice you can see me put more effort into the bike look at the watts go up and you can tell by my body language that's the way you're supposed to look on your bike when you fit it you don't see me fidgeting and moving all over the place to ride i just ride so we get over this bump 
says 2%. It was a little, about two and a half. It's a little more than that, maybe three. But it's short. And now I'm soft pedaling because we're going downhill. You always have to try to maintain your rhythm. But this is an opportunity for you to catch your breath, take a drink, whatever. Well, I didn't need to drink. I already had a drink before I started riding. So usually the first hour, I don't need to drink. You can see I'm putting more force in the pedals. The watts indicate that, but you can tell by my body language. Every time the road goes up, we try to maintain, I guess, the momentum. I'm following very closely. I'm within about a foot. You see, more power into the pedals. And you can see I did not have to move. I just pedal harder. If you're shifting around all the time when you're riding, you're not happy where you're sitting. Get a bike fit. There's no reason for you to ride in discomfort because you're also inefficient when you're not fitted well to your bike. Kenny pulls off. Mike S5 is pulling. It's a slight downhill here, it says minus two. These rollers, you know, you have to shift. We apply more power here. There are a lot of forces going through your bicycle when you pedal. So you need to make sure that you fit it correctly so you don't injure yourself. Because if, if your cleats are not right and so forth, or the saddle height is wrong, you can hurt your knee and so forth. So it's important. It all begins with fit. I stay a little to the left because I'm just being sucked into his wheel here. So I'm trying to catch some of the wind and slow me down. The road's going up. See the watts go up. have to be thinking about what's coming I see the overpass we know this route it helps when you know the route Kenny goes back to the front he lifts the pace I go ahead Mike S5 pulls a little to the right so I move around and carry the pack up to Kenny's wheel Kenny looks back so he wants to do some work up here so I sit on his wheel here We start to climb, he starts to apply the pressure. You see we're over 400 watts for a bit. But it's still kind of civilized as, as the grade increases. All I'm doing is staying on his wheel. We're doing about 18 miles an hour. Three and a half percent or so. Nothing crazy. So now these guys come at the top of the climb. 
there should be I think there's another person that, that will come up yeah Patrick I always have been on the climb with this group and a lot of groups there's always somebody who wants to go a little harder so if you're pulling and you get to a climb in the group hold a steady pace let the other people do their crazy stuff hold a group pace if they come around you let them come around you don't have you don't have to lift your pace every time somebody does something like that because depending on how long the ride is you don't want to expend more energy than you're comfortable with you see somebody put the power down there's a bit of an acceleration but on the flats you're still not hitting 400 watts unless you're in a very large gear spinning on high cadence. So two something, three something on the flats, eh, reasonable as far as power. Since I ride by feel, it's just a matter of being in the gear that my legs like for the effort we're doing. I'm looking in my mirror and I see that it's clear, so I move over and let them know it's clear. Gonna be turning left on Capitol Road. Capitol Hill Road. You know, watch, I'm gonna stay close to them. You got any gap you leave, you're gonna have to close it. I'm right there. That's how you save your energies. You have to push sometimes. It's like you, you do the work necessary so that you can benefit from staying in the draft. They're pushing here. So you have to be able to spin a high cadence medium, low cadence, sometimes you gotta push. You gotta be able to do all of it. Don't be a one dimensional rider, that limits you. Right now I'm spinning a high cadence, about 100 RPMs. Because it makes it easier to keep up with changes in speed, especially on the flats. I don't spin too high a cadence when I'm climbing for an extended period of time because it really taxes your aerobic system. You can do that for short periods to change the pace and so forth. But you gotta find the rhythm that works for you. This whole time we're riding like this, um, the rest of the group, they're not that happy with this pace. As I said earlier, it's off camera, but Dan asked me, were you one of the guys that started this? And I told him, no, not me. You know, <laughs> I was third in line. And the reason he asked that question was because three weeks ago or so, I instigated a high pace on, on the very Fish Creek Road. So that's, that's why Dan asked. Because the way we're riding, people don't get a chance to catch their breath if they're not accustomed to this. Well, you have to be diligent. You can't be drifting too far back and closing gaps, all of that. No, you're gonna ride with these guys, you stay close. I've already downshifted, and I just use, look at my cadence. And they backed off. K Kenny's looking to make sure everybody's here. And I guess they are, so he resumed. But you've got to be in the proper gear when you slow down for a light or a turn so that you can accelerate out of that turn.
and you need to be in the proper gear when you stop at an intersection you need to shift before you stop as you're slowing down go into the gear you're going to start off with when the light changes there's no point in dragging a huge gear through an intersection struggling and straining your whole body we're in a straight line the pace is hot they could draft a, a little closer than they are uh, you know I'm staying about a foot off of Kenny's wheel when it gets harder you you, you follow closer you get up to two inches behind somebody who's experienced enough to where they're not going to do anything crazy, you know. But the faster the ride, the tighter everything gets, instinctively. So you got to be diligent if you want to stay near the front. This is like a flat road here. You hear the wind. So we're moving at a good clip. Between 23 to 25 miles an hour. See my high cadence? That's to close the gap. I'm reacting to the changes in pace that's going on. And it's mechanically more efficient, especially on a very flat road, to use a high cadence. So you don't strain your legs. We check, I let them know everything's clear, even though I'm in second position. And the next guy should be looking to you. All of you should look as you come through because things can change. If you look at our shadows, you get a better, better idea how tight everything is. I'm staying on Ken's, Kenny's wheel closely. The Raven Chapel climb is coming out. Towards the end, Kenny will actually stand up and lift the pace. I maintain this effort here. There he is, he's standing. It's not very sustainable, so I just accelerate a little bit. Then these guys come around, and you'll see us start pulling away. So then the rest of the group will come around Paul. Because Paul's not going to push too hard because of his back. But he's going to ride smartly to where we're over that bump now he didn't have to do 500 and something watts you know because Kenny decided he wanted to sprint you can see I'm coasting zero watts we're coming down and it's gonna go up I hear Paul deep breathing back here somebody's on his wheel it might be Mike S5 the road goes up it's a short bump here sprinter's bump It's not as steep as the other one we just did, so it's mild. I'm sitting in, so really the watts are low. And I must be soft pedaling right now. This is Jerry Lutner in front of uh, Paul. He came around on the climb when Paul let that gap open. So what Paul did is, is what I was talking about is somebody's going crazy at the front. Doesn't mean you gotta kill yourself to keep up. He just kept his efforts steady. And he's still here. So 
So in a few kilometers, he's going to intentionally sit up in the pack. And we see him, and then we go around him. You'll see that on film. And then he tells me later that he just had to back off the effort. So right here, we'll come around that corner, and nobody wants to pull. So Logan's going to the front. This is what I was talking about. Remember, all these guys came around, but nobody wants to go to the front to get that nose in a win. So it's okay if you don't want to pull through find a spot you want to be in and try to stay there there's no point of you leaving gaps you'll see that in a two or three kilometers Abby's going to leave this huge gap that he starts waving people in there well I, you know I, I was sitting on your wheel you leave the gap you better be ready to close it because i'm going to sit on your wheel you open that gap you're going to close it <laughs> so you hear me tell him uh, you can't just sit at the back the whole ride and he says we want the younger guys to pull <laughs> we got Paul H in the 70s that comes out here and puts down the hurt. He's talking about he wants younger guys to pull. He's nowhere near as old as Paul H. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about, but I just want to give him a hard time. Then while we're doing that, Jerry just because Jerry here would just go around us. He's like, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and take a drink right there. So you always need to make sure you're in the gearing that you need for the next acceleration or the corner that's coming up. So I've already downshifted. We're going to go around the corner. Your goal should be stay in the same position. Maintain your position in the line. I just sat and pedaled. So being in the proper gear, I didn't have to waste too much energy by standing. I think this is where Abby's gonna start waving people over. It's just annoying. Look at what he does. He loves, leaves this huge, look, look, at the, look at the gap. He's waving people up. So I'm like, no, I'm not going. <laughs> I thought I said, you can't sit at the back the whole ride. Then you would hear him say, He said he, wanted, he wants the young guys to do the work. <laughs> and while we're doing all that nonsense, Jerry comes around and rides up to the wheels like, you guys. <laughs> I did that just to mess with Abby. That's what Abby does. Abby doesn't want to go through. But then he keeps announcing how many miles or kilometers he's putting in all these huge miles. So uh, what's the point? You can't put your nose out there. Take a good pull, you know. I, I don't mind. So Paul and Jerry went around us. I'm behind Paul after that little snafu back there where I was messing with Abby. But those gaps, see there's a car coming, we line up to the right. These roads are very narrow. But those, those gaps that he leaves like that, it can disrupt a rider who's weak and just barely hanging on because the pace is a little hard. By not keeping the lines tight, you can cause people to get dropped. That's really my issue with it, because when I learned how to cycle, uh, I was taught to just stay close and don't let gaps open because you just waste a lot of energy. You know. You can see right here, if you look at my watts, 300 plus, it was like barely 400 a little bit. This is a climb that we're going up. I'm behind Paul. And there's a bunch of people behind me. I'm not the last rider. Uh, Paul is like mid-pack here. He really should be closer to Jerry. I think this is where he starts backing off intentionally. Because he doesn't want to be attacking all these climbs. Because his back is bugging him. And when you when you're when you've pulled something or something aching you like that, it's better to do a steadier ride. So we come around here because he has sat up. You see us come around. 
There I am. And you see my cadence, 90s to 100. That saves your legs. But at this point in the ride, I'm waiting for Paul. We're we're just about a minute up. It's been a minute since he pulled out. I saw him pull off. They're right on the corner there. They were grouping. I had to back off the air for a little bit. They were grouping up the corner. So by backing off the effort, we're able to go and do like, let's see, this is hour one. We've got like six hours left to ride. So he's like, no, this is, I'm not gonna let it all hang out here. That's what that's about. We've got bigger fish to fry. So they're standing on the corner. Some people are taking health breaks that you see Patrick on the left there. And so we're going, to, I'm just going to motion to them that we're going to keep rolling. I motion to Abby as we go around the corner. Abby likes to call us the twins. So I'm always messing with him because he's got a nickname for everything we do. So whenever I get the chance, I mess with him. Sometimes he says, have mercy. I said, no, no mercy. So right here we turn and I let him know that we're going to keep rolling right there. And he said, okay. So Paul tell him we're going to continue. So they, they didn't wait too long. In a little while they came back, but we were off camera. All right, legends. Well, on uh, 1097, heading south. My brother's pulling. This is three hours, or two forest. hours later. So we get some clips. We've, we've gone, we left, left the group and went, we went further north than they were going. We went through the forest, we took Mount Pleasant Road, and we're coming back on 1097 South towards Taco Corner. This is our, it will be our first break. In a few kilometers, Christian and a couple of other guys are gonna come by. Yeah, this is blowing. That's the thing that happens when we get these fronts that bring the cool weather. As the day warms up, the, 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 the weather from the Gulf, the, the wind, the Southeast wind starts to take over. So now coming home, it's in our face and from the left. If you look at Paul's bandana, it's moving around. So there was no free ride on this ride. I'm hearing some kind of like a switch, like a squeaking noise. Sounds like it's coming from my wheel. It ended up being, I didn't find out till later, like the next day. It was my, uh, my pedals had some kind of, sometimes you get like a glaze on them or some kind of oil or something. And it was just squeaking against the plate in the pedal, on the pedal surface. So like that, you just have to use like, you can use rubbing alcohol or simple green or something, just clean it, and that, that takes care of it. But it was driving us nuts because we tried to decipher what was causing it while we were riding. Because we were both hearing it. Everywhere they join these bridges, they're never that smooth. Sometimes you get lucky, but for the most part, there's a little lip there. So we're, we're doing a good effort. We're in zone two and we're only doing like 16, maybe 17 miles an hour because of the wind. And this is a grade, kind of a false flat, it's at 1%. That's why, you know, speed doesn't matter. Just, just do the effort. Your body doesn't care how much ground you cover. All it cares about is how long you've worked and in what zone. That's what you acclimate to. How long can you hold an effort?
the shoulder narrows here. And so what we're gonna do is, as the rug goes up, I'm going to shift into the proper ratio. Not worry about how fast we're going up the climb. I think I actually get on the small chain ring and probably put it in a 17 or 19, something like that. We're not going very fast, but you can see our effort is higher than it was half a kilometer ago. In a little bit, I think this is, after this climb, Christian and them come by. We end up lifting our pace and slipping onto the back of their little group. And riding to Taco Corner with them. I, I didn't even see them. I just felt his hand on my back. Christian tapped me on the back as it went by. He'd been in Italy for the last few weeks, I think, maybe longer. So he just returned. He was a bit tired, I could tell. When we got to the store, he was tired. He was right. Jet lag and whatever else he was doing when he was out there. You can see how the terrain affects the speed that registers. We we're doing 19 kilometers. A little bit ago now we're doing 34, 35. There. Hey. And when he tapped me, I was like, I called him, called him, and I recognized him, and then I go ahead and lift the pace. And I keep my eye in the mirror, and I see that Paul is there. So I said, okay. I didn't shift, I just, the same gear, I just pedal faster. That's why you have to have the proper gearing at all times. And that wind was just pounding us. When we told Christian what route we were going to take home after we stopped at Taco Corner, he told Paul, he said, that's still too long. <laughs> he was tired. He was ready to go home. So we slip onto the back. We're about maybe a kilometer and a half from Taco Corner. That's the climb before Taco Corner that everybody kind of sprints for. You can see the watts going up. I just downshift, remain seated. It was just a slight acceleration, more than a sprint. I check my mirror, it's clear. Taco Corner. They have breakfast yeah. tacos there. I've never had them, but that's why they call it Taco Corner. It's just a shell gas station. Yeah. It's a good location for the area we ride in. Smack dab in the middle. <laughs> I was asking him about his wife. Yeah, I saw. I saw a bunch of pictures. 
of you with the family, with the all kind of writers. Paul's talking about on Strava. Christian had been loading New pictures. Legends. We're wrapping up this trip one. To Italy. Very breezy. Italiano. We're rolling towards our favorite road, Honia Egypt Road. We're in the neighborhood, the uh, Grand Lake Estates. We're headed east right now, directly into the wind. <laughs> it seemed to be everywhere. You could not avoid it. Listen to that wind. That's why I keep my cadence high. When you ride in the wind like that, then you got a long way to go. You got to save those pistons. There's nothing macho about crawling home in a large gear. <laughs> that you can't handle. The French say you should always use the smallest possible gear for the speed you want to maintain or the effort. When you ride your bike, you feel like you're floating. That the bike is just there, and you're riding at a point in space, and everything is where it should be as far as your seat, feet, and hands. That's when you know you you've got the right fit. care how expensive the bike is if it doesn't fit you well you won't enjoy a ride you won't look forward to it so the road's going up and we got this wind just pounding us from in our face and from the right the southeasterly wind so the wind switched during the day I stay close to the right because Paul is on my left because the wind is causing us to do an echelon I think I'm gonna wave him up in a little bit Get that kit. <laughs> Paul put that, you see the, those shoes with the socks, how they match? The pro team shoes. That's the flight print socks. His other bike, Blade, during the week. <laughs> so on this ride, he was telling me, he said, man, I took out Blade and it beat me up. <laughs> Blade is uh, it's the uh, giant propel. It's, uh, it's a, more of a criterion kind of bike. It's not for the kind of riding we do. It's not a pure road frame. So you really have to select frames that uh, complement the kind of riding you do. And the Blade Free was one of the ones where Paul won in a raffle at work. So, you know.
He likes the Savello that he riding that he's riding here, and also the Scatante. Their geometry is more forgiving. is 30 Celsius three hours ago it was 12 <laughs> that's what there's a joke uh, in our ear to say if you don't like the weather in Houston wait a few minutes and look outside <laughs> it changes a lot <laughs> but it's a pleasant 30 C it's, it's a little warm the kid worked perfectly for the weather. Do you get a taste of what we're dealing with? It's through the wind. I mean, it's just everywhere. I'm in the middle here. I think there is a vehicle. Yeah, this vehicle parked over there. So I've given him plenty of room. Some utility vehicle to doing something over there. So when it's windy like that, you want to make sure even more so you maximize your gear selection. stand here just to change things up a bit I'm in a slightly larger gear as low as possible this is the most comfortable position when you're just kind of cruising and there's not a whole lot going on when it's very busy or congested I use the drops get to this intersection I'm not sure if the black car is going because he looks like he's parked on the left there then he signals I'm like what is that just go you know <laughs> I don't know why I said, really you need a signal here <laughs> oh man <laughs> this is our favorite road Honia Egypt Road we have to wait, there's a car coming. So I tell Paul, let's wait there. And after him, then we can go. There's another road user in our lane. I'll go ahead and stay on the smoothest part of the pavement right there. You see the little piece that it didn't scrape? <laughs> That's what I'm using. <laughs> so we can settle into some kind of rhythm. The wind now is coming from the left and in our face. We're going more southerly than easterly.
but we're going in a southeasterly direction, so it doesn't matter. The wind is everywhere. Trying to get some kind of rhythm going. We love this rhythm. It just makes you work. I'm getting the drops because the wind is just picking up. I mean, usually we'll be going closer to 40k. And <laughs> we're barely breaking. <laughs> 20, 20 miles an hour <laughs> at this effort anyway. Just very, very blustery and breezy. We get that a lot when the weather's changing on us all the time. The harder things get, the smoother you want to ride. I stay in the drops, it just felt better at this point with all that wind pounding around in all directions. I like to stay on the right on this ridge here. I'm dodging the reflectors. <laughs> I just maintain the same profile as I move my arms up on the drops. The road's going downhill, that's why the water's a little slightly downhill. Focusing on relaxing and letting the ride come to me basically. There's no point of force anything here. Especially since we've got that bump coming up at the end and the grind for another two kilometers or so after that. Such a fair, pleasant day. I've got a 
good rhythm going. I want to just maintain it. Climb is in the distance. You will see the speed start going down as the grade kicks in. Climb begins, I go into the appropriate gear. Don't worry about speed, find the rhythm. If you're riding with others, you still need to find your rhythm if they're going faster than what you're comfortable with. Right there, I get on a small chain ring. It starts to bite here. It's gonna get up to 5%. And it gets there a couple of times. It always says four, yeah, five, there we go. And then after the light pole, it gets back to 5% again. There. <laughs> this road is always busy. That's the thing, you can't really enjoy the climb, but I like coming on this road. I left it in a large gear. I stayed on a big chain ring. And just as it settles, my cadence will go up. I didn't let them go below 70, I believe. So even though the climb is officially over, the bump is over, but we still have the grade as that's 2% again. I ease into it, only shift when I absolutely have to. You can see the speeds are going up, effort stays about the same. But the terrain is changing. should be able to drink, put it back without your rhythm changing. You shouldn't have to coast to drink. Practice that. Because by you getting proficient with that, you will drink when you need to. You won't be concerned about, oh well, I can't drink here because I'm gonna swerve. You just focus on the effort, focus on the sensations that you feel. 
see how the pedals look like I'm just kind of slapping them with my feet. As the terrain changes, the same effort yields a faster pace. It got easier, so I shifted up a little bit to keep the effort the same. As we roll towards town, the road levels off, the effort stays the same, and we just start going faster. Back in town, we use the shoulder. It's a little busier than the roads we've been on. It's past, a little past 12.30 on a Saturday. Everybody's out running errands. So by staying smooth and maintaining your pedaling, you cover more ground. If you're finding that you're having to stop, pedal, pedal, stop, pedal, pedal, stop to adjust, your fit is off. You shouldn't have to. So we'll do our usual. We're going to turn right here because it's very busy behind us. We'll do a U-turn. Behind that, come behind that truck. As soon as we turn, the light changes for this side. There we go. Respect. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So we're taking this route because it's quieter. Moving time. <laughs> we're gonna turn right at the corner here coming up to get us into the woodlands so I hope you all got a chance to get some K's in this Saturday but this is part of what we did on Saturday that's it my brother <laughs>